Hello friends, in this operating system class, we will see this RAID. RAID is nothing but redundant array of inexpensive disk uh, from fourth unit. In today's class, we will see what is RAID and then RAID controller. This is the hardware component. After that, we will see all the RAID levels from 0 through 6. And simultaneously, we will see the advantages and the disadvantages of all the RAID levels. Then we will see the nested RAIDs. RAID. RAID means the redundant array of inexpensive disk or sometimes it may called as redundant array of independent disk. And this RAID is very much helpful for storing the same data on different places that is replication of data on multiple hard disk. Or uh, we can save the same data on SSDs also that is solid stage drives to protect the data in case of disk failures that is if there is any loss of data, we can retrieve that data from the redundancy of uh, that is the same data will be stored in some other places. The next one is RAID controller. Here, a group of disk arrays which are combined together to form RAID and it is otherwise called as logical storage unit. Okay, as per operating system point of view, it is a single logical storage unit, right? Now, the RAID controller is a device which is used to manage all hard disk drives in storage array. Okay, so uh, this is a device which is used to manage all the logical storage unit. Now, it can be used as a level of abstraction between the operating system and logical storage unit. Okay, so this will act as a mediator uh, to manage and maintain the logical storage unit. So, logical storage unit is nothing but the physical device presenting a group of disk, right? Now, the RAID controller can improve the performance and help to protect the data in case of crash. Suppose if there is any data failure, by using data controller, we can easily retrieve the failed data, okay, or lost data, right? The next one is RAID levels. The level indicates the version of the RAID. Okay, here we are having mainly 0 to 6 RAID levels and the other levels are also there. That is 0, 1, 1, 0, etc. The levels are also there and the number of level has been broken into three categories. That is all these uh, levels will be broken into three categories. First one is standard and second one is nested and third one is non-standard RAID levels. Okay, so there are three categories of RAID levels. First one is standard. Standard indicates 0 to 6. These are standard RAID levels and nested. Nested means the combination of 0 and 1, 1 and 0 and the combination of 5 and 6. Okay, so these are nested um, levels and non-standard levels, non-standard RAID levels. So there are three levels are there. The first one is RAID 0. RAID 0 is nothing but the stripped disk. That is, RAID 1 takes any number of disk. That is the physical disk. Any number of physical disk and merging them into one large volume. Okay. For example, here we are having two physical drives. This is first one. This is second one. And these two will be merged together to form a one single unit. Very large single unit after that this single unit will be divided into various blocks okay here we are having block one block two block three etc up to block n okay and the very large block will be divided into small small single block in the small block the data is actually stored okay now the advantage of trade zero is disk utilization is 100 percent okay and the speed will get increased for both reading as well as writing on multiple disks. Okay, the, these are the advantages. When come to drawback, the data will be lost if there is any failure in disk. For example, if drive 1 got failed, then the data will be stored in this drive 1 will get lost. We cannot retrieve because there is no redundant of data. Okay. The next is RAID 1. That is mirrored disk, which is otherwise called as disk mirroring. Okay, this configuration consists of at least two drives. 
okay so here we are having this drive 1 and drive 2 so two drives it requires the second drive actually duplicates the first drive okay so both the data will be same right disk 1 which is exactly equal to disk 2 all the data will be copied see block 1 the same block 1 is here right what is the advantage of this mirrored disk the read performance is improved since either disk can be read at the same time okay and if there is a failure in this particular drive, we can easily retrieve the data from this disk uh, drive 2, right? So, this is the advantage of RAID 1. And the write performance should also be same. And what is the drawback here? The utilization will be reduced to 50%, okay? Only 50% of disk will be utilized. The remaining 50% is used to, to store the copy of the uh, previous disk. Hence, the utilization will be reduced to 50%. RAID 2. When come to RAID 2, there are two types of disk. First one is data disk and second one is ECC disk. ECC means error checking and correction. Right? All the data will be stored in data disk. See here right, in our diagram, we are having four data disk. Data disk and the Hamming code, Hamming code which is used for error checking and correction that will be stored in the ECC disk, ECC disk, okay. When come to read operation, the ECC code verifies the correct data, okay. If data is correct, we can easily read the data from this data disk or if there is any correction, then by using this Hamming code, we can easily compute uh, the Hamming distance and we can easily correct the data and then the data will be read from this disk, right? And next let us see the advantage and disadvantage of RAID 2. When come to advantage, detecting errors and correcting error will be very easy, okay, by using that parity bit and extremely high data transfer rate which is possible and high data transfer rate which is required and better the ratio of data disk to ECC disk. That is, uh, we are having data disk and ECC disk, isn't it? So, this ratio should be better. Suppose if data disk are very much higher when compared to ECC disk, then error correction and deduction and correction will be somewhat slower. But if they are equal, that is 50%, then the transfer rate will be very high. Right? And relatively simple controller design when compared to the other, that is higher disk levels, uh, RAID levels, uh, RAID 3, RAID 4 and RAID 5. Okay, when come to disadvantage, very high ratio of ECC disk. So, if we include more number of ECC disk, then the error correction and deduction will be very easy, but this will cost more, isn't it? And the entry level cost is very high because we need to spend more amount for this ECC disk and high data transaction rate because it always checks whether the reading data is correct or not. And no commercial implementation exists. This is very big drawback of RAID 2. Okay, this is not available in the market. The next one is RAID 3. In RAID 3, the data blocks are subdivided and there is one dedicated drive for storing the parity information. See, in our uh, uh, diagram, we are having two data drives and one parity drive. Okay, one drive will be dedicated for storing only the parity information. And the strip uh, parity is generated on drives. While writing data into data drive, the parity is generated and that will be recorded on parity disk and checked on reads. Okay, the parity will be used for checking, that is reading the data, if there is any error or not. And uh, the embedded ECC information is used to, to detect errors. Right, ECC means error checking and correction. And data recovery is accomplished by calculating 
the exclusive information recorded on other devices. Okay. In RAID level 3, it requires minimum 3 drives to implement because 2 for storing the data and at least 1 for the parity. Right. In RAID 3 is better for single user system. And next, let us see the advantage and the disadvantage of RAID 3. When come to advantage, a very high read data transfer rate and very high write data transfer rate also. And the throughput is also very high and very low ratio of parity disk and data disk. Okay, only one parity disk is sufficient means the efficiency is very high. When come to drawback, the transaction rate equals to that of single drive at best. And the controller design is very complex. That is, the RAID controller 3 designing is very complex and very difficult to implement and commercially failed model. Next one is RAID 4. Here also we are having two types of disk. For the first type is data disk and second type is parity disk. Okay, that is ECC disk. Uh, here, each data is written onto a block on data disk. See, and data will be write, written here. During write operation, the parity of same uh, rank block will be generated and that parity will be written on this ECC disk. Okay, the same ranked block. During the read operation, the parity will be checked and the correct data will be read from the data blocks, right? Here, the data level, sorry, the RAID level 4 storage system, which requires minimum 3 drives to implement, okay? At least 2 drives for data and 1 drive for parity check. The advantage of RAID 4, very high read data transfer rate, and low ratio of parity disk when compared to data disk and which gives very high efficiency and high aggregated read data transfer rate okay and these are advantages when come to drawback it is quite complex for uh, the RAID 4 controller design and worst write transaction rate because while writing uh, data into data disk the corresponding parity will be generated okay and write aggregation transfer rate also very worst and difficult to and it is very difficult and inefficient data rebuild in the event of disk failure if any one of the disk fails then it is very difficult to retrieve the data and block read transfer rate which also equal to a single disk and the RAID 4 is also a failure model this is commercially failed one. RAID 5, which is otherwise called as stripped disk with a single parity. Right? In the RAID 5 will also require three drives and there is no separate parity drive here. Okay? Each data block is written on data disk. Okay? Here also we are having a set of data blocks. Uh, during write operation, all the data will be recorded on data blocks and the parity of the block with the same rank will be also generated during write operation and this parity will be distributed among all the drives. Okay. And the parity will be checked during the read operation if there is any error occurred or not. If there is any error, then by using the parity bit, we can easily retrieve that particular original data okay, during read operation. The advantages and disadvantages of RAID 5. Uh, first advantages, highest read data transaction rate and medium write data transaction rate. And the low ratio of ECC disk to the data disk because the ECC will be distributed on the data disk itself, which gives very high efficiency and a good aggregate transfer rate. Okay, these are the advantages. When come to disadvantages, the disk failure has medium impact on throughput and the most complex controller design and difficult to rebuild in the event of disk failure 
and individual block data transfer rate as same as single disk. So these are disadvantage of RAID 5. RAID 6, this is stripped disk with double parity. Here, two independent parity computations must be used, okay, in order to provide protection against double disk failure, okay. If two disk failed at a time, by using RAID 6, we can easily retrieve the data. For this, two different algorithms are employed to achieve this purpose and RAID 6 level requires minimum four drives to implement. And next, let us see the advantages and disadvantages of RAID 6. Uh, first one is advantage. Uh, RAID 6 is extension of RAID 5, which allows additional fault tolerance by distributing the dual parity across disk. Here also we are having two different types of data. First one is data, uh, that is system data, which is stripped on block level and distributed across all the devices. And when come to second parity, which is also calculated during return write operation, and this also distributed among all the drives. The RAID 6 provides extremely high data fault, uh, fault tolerance and it can sustain multiple simultaneous drive failures. Suppose if more number of drives fails, uh, by using this double parity, we can easily retrieve all the data. And it protects again single and multiple bad block failures. And RAID 6 storage is perfect solution for critical applications. This is very important. Okay, when come to disadvantage, this is very complex to create the uh, RAID 6 controller and it requires n plus 2 drives to implement because of this dual parity scheme. Next, let us see this nested RAID levels. That is, the combination of two levels will be combined to form this nested levels. That is, RAID 10, which is the combination of RAID 1 and RAID 0. RAID 10, that is the combination of RAID 1 and RAID 0. Here, this is RAID 10, that is, first it is having RAID 0, it is having two different disks and these two are mirror to each other, that is disk 1 which is equal to disk 2 and disk 3 which is equal to disk 4, okay, disk 1 and 2 are mirror to each other and disk 3 and 4 are mirror to each other, okay, and which offers high performance than RAID 1, okay, but the costly is very high. It is very costly one, okay, and it provides security by mirroring all data on secondary devices because for everything we are having backup and the data transfer rate is very high. The next nested model is RAID 01, that is the combination of 0 plus 1. Here the organization method is slightly different. The RAID 01 creates the strip set first and then mirror the strip set, that is. Disk 1 and disk 2 are first created, that is RAID 0. After that, this RAID 0 will be mirrored here. Okay. Disk 1 and disk 3 are equal and disk 2 and disk 4 are equal here. Up to this, we have seen this uh, different RAID levels. And in this class, we have seen what is RAID, RAID controller, uh, RAID levels from 0 through 6, so simultaneously we have seen the advantage and the drawbacks of all the RAID levels. Then we have seen the nested RAIDs, that is RAID 10 and 01. In the next class, we will see another important topic from 4th unit. Thank you.